What's up guys? So since the wagon's done, we're gonna start working on Forrest's Z28. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this in other videos. This is his 82 Z28 um, with a 5 liter and a 4 speed manual. Um, so it basically needs a whole new rear end. We're not sure what's wrong with it, but it sounds absolutely horrible. Um, so we got a whole nother, a whole nother rear end with disc brakes from another third gen. So we're going to work on uh, getting this rear end out with the drum brakes and all this crap. Um, we have lowering springs for the rear. The, the new shocks are already in it in the rear, so uh, we, we have a... probably show the tire. Yeah, so we have a... <clears throat> we're probably going to end up cutting the springs for the front. And uh, the tires that were on this thing were absolutely junk. So this is the tire that came off of it. It's uh, pretty much separated itself inside, um, inside the tube. So it's all ballooned out. Um, we're not exactly sure how old these are, but they gotta be at least 15 years old of how bad the rubber looks. So at the moment, uh, these calipers, although they look rusty, I actually replaced these. They just rusted right away. Um, I wanted to replace the rotors and pads, but it turns out you have to take the wheel bearing apart to mess with the rotor. So uh, now I'll be doing that. So I'm working on taking the whole spindle off right now. And then I've got slaughtered and drilled rotors and ceramic pads. And I have new struts also, uh, and then I'll be getting new sway bar end links and all that shit, and uh, probably just cutting the spring since I I bought a set of lowering springs, and the ad said uh, it, it didn't specify whether it was four springs or two, and it showed a picture of four springs, and the description didn't say front or rear or anything, so I bought them, and I thought they were going to be all four, and it, they sent me two rears, and I emailed them, and they said, oh no, that's just a rear set, so... Anyway, fuck eBay. Uh, there it is. So I got rear lowering springs. I'm probably going to cut the fronts because whatever. It'll be fine. And so this is the other rear end that we got that actually has a working LSD in it. Um, and it's set up for disc brakes. So we have a set of calipers there, but we're, they've been sitting around for years. So um, we're probably going to end up getting new ones. Um, but first, we got to get the old rear end out. Okay, so he got this, uh, this spindle out here. Just disconnected the sway bar from there and under the tie rod from it. So we got the whole thing out. And we're working on getting the rear end out now. So we gotta disconnect the sway bar there. Uh, I just took the pan hard bar bolt out on this side and just start unbolting so stuff. You can see down here, but all the sway bar bushings all around the car are just completely junk. So they're literally coming out as dust. Okay, so we got the covers off the off the uh, drum brakes on both sides. They're kind of rusted on there, but we need to disconnect the brake cable um, so we can actually drop the rear end. Um, struts are all off, and we basically just have the control arms left and the uh, the brake lines, and then we can drop the whole thing down. All right, so it's the next day. We got the springs out, um, brake lines disconnected, drive line and torque arm are disconnected. Um, we got the lower control arms also disconnected for us. It's working on the last one right here. And then we can take the whole thing out in one big piece. You need to slide back with it. And pull it toward you. There it goes. This thing's going to fall. And we'll just drag it out. <laughs> and there it is. So we got to swap over the sway bar off of here. Uh, just has some mounts right there we got to take off. And then set up the brake lines on the other rear end we got. Um, and then we can look up, figure out how to put it in. <laughs> so we got these brand new brake lines for the other rear end we got. So we're just trying to figure out how they're actually supposed to go on because the divider goes right here. So it looks like this one kind of sits in here like that. But that side is really confusing. So we're yeah. trying to figure out I don't know what to do with this. how it goes on. It's something like that though. Maybe. I think it goes under over there. Yeah. Because then it's angled. It's at a 90 degree angle. Like... Hmm. Alright, so we didn't really film much, but we got the... New, new rear end in there. Um, 
Lowering springs are just kind of sitting in here. Um, we put the new um, end links on the sway bar and all that's hooked up. Um, the drive shaft and the torque arm still aren't connected, but uh, we got one of the brake lines hooked up here. You see the brand new brake line. Um, this is the new uh, eBay rotor we got and the, the spacer is going to run. Um, because with these 18-inch uh, steelies, uh, the, the offset's completely wrong, so you need basically this 2-inch spacer just to get the wheel to like sit flush with the fender. So it actually fits pretty perfect. Um, and we also, my brother, he picked up some new interior stuff um, out of his, I don't know, a V6 Camaro, I think it was like an 85. So we got part of the interior right now in here. Um, he's going to get the rest of it in the next couple of days or so. But you got some back seats just kind of sitting in here. Finished putting all the trim and stuff back on the top. Um, he's not going to put the headliner back in, but at least it has some trim on these A pillars and down the, down the B pillars here. So it doesn't look so crazy. We also started putting uh, this side back together. Uh, we had to take this whole lower control arm out of here, this lower A arm. Um, and he took it to work and pressed the new ball joint into it because basically the only way to change the ball joint is to use it, have a press to actually put it in. Um, and, that, and the actual boot itself was a little bit too big, so you had to take the whole thing apart, press it in, and then put the boot back on. It is kind of ridiculous. Um, but he got it all cleaned up. Um, we got a, I'm pretty sure we're going to chop these springs. We're just going to take, you know, like one coil out of it just to kind of drop it about an inch or so, maybe a little more, so it matches the lowering springs in the rear. Um, but all that still has to happen on the other side. We basically haven't really started taking it apart yet. Um, he's got brand new wheel bearings and everything. Um, these calipers are actually brand new. They just we didn't paint them, so they rusted pretty quick. Um, we got new shocks and stuff for the front as well. So just gotta get that taken apart. These are the Excel G KYB uh, struts he got, and these are the uh, new door cards that he picked up from the same car. So that's gonna make it super nice um, inside there. Because right now, I mean, as you guys saw before, the door cards just rotted off. So. Just gotta take all this stuff apart again and put that on there. All right, this is my first time doing old American style wheel bearings, uh, so we just went ahead and did one before we try and show you guys how to do it. Um, so uh, basically, just pop this cap off, and then there's a castle nut uh, with a cotter pin that was like literally hand tight. We took it off with just a socket, no ratchet, and then uh, take the caliper off. And then the rotor actually has the races included in it. See, this one I actually already put the bearing in. Let's see, it has the races in there. There's an inner and an outer bearing. One's bigger, one's smaller. The outer one's smaller. So, because I have new rotors and new bearings, uh, I took the races out of the, or off of the new bearings, because I don't need them, and just plopped the new uh, bearing down in there and then hammered the seal in. Uh, obviously completely packed it full of grease uh, in my in my palm and then basically put it on the spindle uh, we put the new struts or uh, yeah struts not shocks on the spindle first uh, while it was out of the way turned out the backing plate was loose and missing bolts uh, so we could fix that and then slap the rotor on drop the bearing in there's a special washer that goes on top and then the nut and uh, in just a minute we'll show you guys how to do that on the other side once we have it apart. Okay, so once again, this is the other side now. Uh, replace the strut, uh, which we took this off for, the backing plate. This one wasn't loose and had all the bolts, luckily. Um, and then just take your new bearing, pack it full of grease, drop it in there, in the, new, in the, the race of the new rotor, tap in your seal with a hammer, um, and then I'll just throw some grease on here. this seat it on there where's my new bearing 
this, don't need that. Grab some more grease. And just pack it. Once that's all done, just drop it in like that. I'm gonna get a fresh pair of gloves. Just kind of wiggle the rotor and it'll seat down in there. Wipe some extra grease in it. And then take your special washer. Just in there like that. Castle nut. Like that. It's just finger tight. And I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more. Just make sure there's no slop in it and it still spins freely. Okay. It doesn't need to be real tight as, as long as there's no slop in it side to side and it still spins freely which seems pretty free to me so put a cotter pin through it and then bend it you get some pliers spring out of the right front, that spring over there is underneath the transmission is out of the left front. Um, these are going to be cut. We're going to cut one coil off of these uh, basically just because I I think I already talked about it before but we got screwed on eBay lowering springs and they only sent me rears. I can't afford fronts right now and I'm having problems with the 91 SS so I'm probably going to be working on that and not spending more money on this car as much as I can. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to chop it probably right here and then uh, throw these back in and hope it sits as even, or I mean as low as the, the lowering springs will. Um, so both front hubs are done. Uh, this control arm is already on with the new ball joint. Uh, this one over here is going with me to work to get pressed. Uh, press the old one out, press the new one in, clean it up. And then we can put the front suspension together and roll it out. This car probably also needs a clutch as well. It makes some weird noises and I smelled it once when I did a burnout. Uh, so I can't really afford that at the moment, so that will probably be a later video. But uh, I think we're going to wrap up this video for now until we get the rest of the front suspension parts done. But thanks for watching. Bye.